All right, so in all of the examples previously, we've either run our sketch in real time in the browser, which is pretty amazing we can do that, or maybe rendered out a single still image. Um, but what happens if we wanna scale up our resolution? Maybe we wanna generate 4K, um, a sketch that doesn't actually fit on the screen, or um, we're trying to do too many things in a single frame and our computer just can't keep up. Um, to, there's a bunch of ways that we could think about approaching this, but I think the best way is to save a whole bunch of frames from your sketch to file and then turn that into a video. And this is something I do a lot in my work where you know, maybe I want to, yeah, again, you know, render something really complicated or at really high resolution that then can be played back um, as a fixed video rather than as software. Um, so I've created kind of a basic setup here for this. Um, in this case, I'm generating a bunch of random shapes at um, HD video resolution. Um, this is going to be totally fine, actually, to run in real time. Um, but let's say we wanted to create frames from this to make a video. The first solution we might think of is to use the save command here. Um, but we're going to quickly see the limitation, which is it's going to prompt us to save every single frame. We're going to have to manually click OK. And that's just not going to work because at 60 frames a second, we're generating easily thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of frames, even for a couple of minutes of video. So that's not going to work. To the rescue, however, is this great library called C Capture. Um, this is meant for um, Canvas elements, which uh, P5.js uses, along with lots of other things. And we can easily kind of integrate it into our project. Now, you will have to add this to your code. So you have to add it to your index file and make sure the C Capture library is available to you. Um, but once we've done that, it's going to be really easy. Um, I'm going to go ahead then and create a variable called capture. That's going to be for that. And um, we do need to make some changes here to how our canvas works um, so that capture, the capture library knows what to record. Um, so normally we just use this create canvas command, but we can instead create a variable called canvas and then call create canvas. And this works exactly the same way, except now we have an object that we can um, change some of the properties for, including its ID. And in this case, I'm just going to call it canvas. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and ID just attaches a unique name to that element on our page. If you've done web design before, IDs and classes kind of make sense. In, in our case, we can just think of this as like um, giving it a name. Because then we can let our C capture library know we want to record this canvas. So I'm going to say capture equals new C capture. And then it takes some um, arguments here in the form of a dictionary. So um, we want to say the format that we'd like to record is PNG. It can record in a couple of different formats. Um, you can check the documentation is real good for this. So you can see um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that it can do. Uh, the format's going to be PNG. I like that because it's lossless. It's not like a JPEG where that loses quality in compression. And then um, we're going to also give it a name. And this is going to be the folder name that it creates. So I'm going to call this frames. And um, that's it. Now there's some other things that it can, options, and we can look at those in a little bit. And um, then we need to start this capture and then have a spot where it ends. And um, to start it, we would say capture.start. Now you might imagine putting that in the end of setup. This would be where I would put this because then as soon as it's ready, it starts recording. For whatever reason, I found it doesn't work to do that. It's kind of a bummer, but there's an easy workaround. Um, P5.js allows us to grab the number, the current frame count. Where are we? It starts at zero um, or maybe one, actually, I'm not sure. But to be safe, we could say if frame count equals one, then we're going to start the capture. And then we need some way for it to know if it's done. Actually, let's add a console log here. We'll just say starting recording. That way we know it's working. And then we want to have it automatically finish. And the way I like to do this is to create a variable called num frames and set that equal to a certain number. And when it reaches that, it's going to quit recording for us, which is really nice. Then you can walk away. You know, if you're recording a couple of minutes, even this might take a while. So you can go have a coffee or whatever. So then I'm going to say if frame count equals num frames, uh, we can console log to tell us we're done. Uh, we can turn on no loop. That way it doesn't try to keep going, which is good. And then we're going to say capture 
dot stop. That's going to stop the recording, and then capture dot save is going to prompt us to save um, save when we're done. And then we do need to add this return here again. I'm not super sure why, but it seems to freak out if we don't do this, um, and that's just going to help it run better. One more thing we need to do to make this work. We then need to actually tell it to capture every frame. So I put this at the very bottom of the draw. I'm going to say capture dot capture. And then we have to tell it what to capture. So document.getElementById canvas. So this is the name that we created up here in setup. And document.getElementById, this is a part of regular JavaScript. It allows us to grab elements from the page, in this case, by this ID that we created here. And that's it. So every frame, uh, when it creates, starts on frame one, it's going to start recording. It's going to draw all this stuff and save it to this internal memory, basically. And then when it's done, uh, when it reaches a certain point, it's going to save it. So let's try running this and see what happens. It's going in the background. It's going to create 100 frames. And then we can see it prompts me to download. And it does it in this compressed way, which is really nice. So I'm going to save that. And it should end up in my downloads folder. And I can open this up for you. Hang on, sorry. Here we go. Um, there's too much weird stuff in my downloads folder. Um, and here we go. So we can see it's saving all of these different frames. Not that exciting in this case, but um, it works. It also adds what are called leading zeros to our file name. So it pads that file name. So in the first one is, what is that, six or eight zeros? And then all the way up to the last one here. And um, this is really going to be super important later when we try to combine these into video. Some computer operating systems would put 1 followed by 10, followed by 11, um, followed by 2 and 20, right? So it would be kind of out of order um, unless we add a bunch of zeros to the start of the file name. Um, so that's all we need to do to generate these frames, but then we need a way to combine these into video. And if you've used Premiere or After Effects, you could certainly use that tool. Um, but my favorite instead is something called FFmpeg. And it's this amazing command line library for creating and um, working with converting videos. And it's really, really powerful. So um, I'm just going to show you briefly how to do that here. Um, and, you know, FFmpeg is this really complicated library that can feel really intimidating. Um, I have put, oops, um, in the sample code, I have put uh, this FFmpeg command. And really, for the most part, it should be fine for what you're doing and you don't need to dig in any deeper. So I've changed directories into my frames folder here. Um, oh, you will need to install FFmpeg most likely. And I've also included instructions in the sample code for you to check that out. Um, and then here's my command. And we'll just talk about what's happening here. Um, boy, I don't remember what Y is. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I've already started. I should have looked these up ahead of time. Anyway, Y, I think, uh, is important. So you should include that. Rate is the frame rate. Um, I've been doing this so long, I don't even, you know, I kind of use the same, same thing here. Um, our input, actually, you know what? We don't want to be in the frames folder. I want to be one um, one uh, folder above. So in this case, I'm in my downloads folder. Um, is that a big deal? I don't think it should be a big deal. I, I tend to like doing this. OK, so then, sorry, FFmpeg, why the frame rate is going to be 24. Our input will be the frames folder. And then this funky formatting here, um, which 08d.png, just want to make sure I get this right. Um, this Parenth uh, percent sign 08D refers to the leading zero. So one, two, three, four, five, wait, how many is it? I can't see. Let's zoom in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What a weird number. Okay. So it's seven zeros. Hopefully I got that right. Um, and then that's going to pick all of the files that end in PNG that have seven digits. And it will do them in order, which is really nice. Um, we want our codec for our video to be um, H.264. And again, this is just from my experience and practice. There's lots of, this is why FFmpeg is fun and super confusing. Um, this is the way the video is encoded. I think this is going to work well. I'm also asking for it to be high quality. CRF, I also don't remember exactly what that is. It has to do with quality. Um, PIX FMT, this is required for 
Uh, sorry, I want to make sure I get this right, 420p. Um, this is required for PNG. And then the last thing is the file name that we want to create. And let's um, call this my sweet video.mp4. And hopefully, if I got this all right, it's going to run. Cool, that looks good. And it's done. If I now go to this and open it in QuickTime, here's my video. I can run it. In this case, it's only four seconds long, um, but this is pretty sweet. Now I realize this FFmpeg stuff is kind of confusing, but really if you just use the template that I've created for you, uh, where is it up here? Um, this is gonna work really easily. All you need to do is just change the name of your folder and the output file you wanna create, and it does all the work for you. Um, so that's C capture with FFmpeg, really powerful if you want to generate super high res video, if you want to um, create a really, really complex, you know, maybe you want to do all pixel level stuff and it's just really, really slow. This is an awesome alternative for that.